Welcome back to episode three of Engine on this, the day of my birth. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the alarmable system. And of course this all starts with the alarmable. And in here you can see that there are six alarms and it is not a singleton because it's something that should be inherited by the game object if they wanna use alarms. You can see here there are two methods, set alarm and stop alarm. Inside of set alarm, you can see it's a little more complicated than the rest of the, uh, the systems here. And the reason for that is because each alarm has registration data, which includes a iterative, an iterator to the position it belongs in in the alarm in the, the alarmable collection, as a status, and it has two command patterns: one for re registration and one for deregistration. Now, when it goes ahead and uh, creates an alarmable, when it's you know sets the alarm, it uh, it checks to see if the alarmable is already registered. And then it sets the timer. This just means it passes the time into the actual uh, command pattern, which is created when the alarmable is created and deleted when the alarmable is deleted. And it uh, goes ahead and submits the command to the, uh, the command broker. And then it sets this to be, re be registered. So um, what happens is, is the alarm registration manager uh, has a uh, has an execute function. And inside the execute function, it basically just calls alarm registration on the alarm pointer that it holds and this just registers the alarm to the current scene with the time that it has. It goes ahead and checks to make sure that this hasn't already happened since the last cycle just for good measure and then it sets the status to be registered. So um, what it does is it does constant deletion in the alarmable manager. So if we go over to the alarmable manager uh, you can see here that uh, it has a, uh, a multi-map this is so that there's no duplicates, um, and it doesn't matter what time, how long it takes, because I have constant deletion. That's why in this public thing, I have the alarm position is an alarm timeline iterator. That way, it can very quickly remove itself if it needs to. How the alarm bowl manager works is it goes through the entire list and it makes it makes sure that the alarm bowl is not empty, and also that the the time of the first or uh, of the object that it's on is uh, less than the, uh, the the game time. If it's not, then it goes through and everything that is greater than the game time, it deregisters the alarm and it um, it triggers the alarm and then it erases it from the, uh, the actual uh, alarm timeline. So, um, you know, it that way, you know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't take any time because it's already on that iterator. Uh, so, uh, oh gosh, there's so much to go over. Um, so ba basically the runtime is not, not a worry. Um, and, uh, for the alarmable manager, uh, it doesn't need to worry about deleting any of the alarms because there are no pointers. There are only pointers to the alarmable and, um, that's something that'll be deleted when the game object itself is deleted. So you wouldn't want to delete that. Um, and then also, um, this object is held by the scene. This is not a singleton, so there's no cleanup required with, in terms of singleton. Uh, so over here, I have the, I'm sorry, I have the documentation for the, uh, the alarmable manager. And here you can see that it just gives an example of some code and it says, uh, you know, what it, what you need to do and, um, all that stuff that's all that juicy good stuff so um, yeah that's the the alarm system so the keyboard uh, system is a little bit more complicated uh, how that works is there every scene has a keyboard event manager <coughs> I'm sorry and um, this is okay so this was a system that I designed kind of a little differently than I probably most people did um, I have a lot of iterators because I was going a little crazy with the constant deletion time so uh, how this works is uh, when you register a key, you pass in the inputable, the key, and the event type. And, oh, I should probably go to the inputable first. The inputable has uh, the uh, submit registration. And basically how that works is it, you know, it checks to see if, or it, uh... yeah, okay. So here we have uh, the command patterns here. And then there's a bunch, okay, so there's a bunch of this stuff. And um, basically what's going on here is I have a list, the inner, the inputable has a list of the uh, the keys that it um, that it's checking. 
So it has a list, uh, or a map, I'm sorry, of the keys that it that, that is checking. So when it registers the key, it also comes back to here, and it um, it holds on to that key, and it also holds on to the key location. So whichever one is smaller, um, you know, if there's more keys being tracked um, and less objects, then it'll go through the inputables. If there's more inputables and less keys, it'll go through the keys instead. So that way, you know, it's a more flexible system. Um, so uh, when you submit the registration, you give it the key and the event type. And uh, when you go in here, it it, uh, it does the key registration for the, the command pattern. Um, and then, which basically what that does is it just, it you know, it just saves the, this data information into the, the command pattern for, for later use. And then it submits the command and then it sets the, the thing to registered. And then when the command pattern is um, when it when it pro, when it executes its uh, its uh, the keys it needs to register, it just goes through its own list and registers all of the keys that it's holding on to. That way, you know, it can um, still be existing and you know still be updating, and um, these objects can be uh, registered. So. <clears throat> I'm sorry, as the as the cycle is going on without the command pattern having to be resubmitted to the to the uh, to the broker. That way it just can be sit there and any more data that needs to be added to it, it can be added to it. And then when it comes time to execute the, the broker, it just goes through it and it, and it executes. So um, that's how that works. And then um, inside the keyboard event manager, which is which belongs to the scene, individual scenes, um, it holds on to a single key map and um, this is the Azul key and the single uh, key map manager and um, it's a pointer to a single key uh, key event manager uh, so basically how this works is um, when you register it with a key and an event type um, it goes in here and it uh, it tries to find the key in the single key map and um, if it if the index is equal to the end, meaning if it's not in there, then it creates a new single key event manager. It saves a location in the key event manager, and then it registers the key, um, which basically just means that if it's pressed, then it, it you know it does what it needs to do to put it into to the pressed list, and then it saves that iterator, uh, and then it sends that iterator back um, into the inputable. And if it's not uh, a press, then it does pretty much the same thing just for release. Again, there's a lot of iterators going on because I didn't know if there would be more objects or more keys being tracked. So I wanted to cover um, both situations in case that was, uh, that was necessary. Um, so basically, you have that going on. And then in the process, key events, it just goes through each of the uh, the key the single keys and then it processes the single keys and when a single key processes it just basically does the same thing that you know anything else would do uh, actually this is different so it it it, does, it check, gets the current state of the key from the azul package it checks to see if the current state is equal to, to the previous state if it's not then it goes ahead and recognizes that it's either been pressed or it's been released and then it sets the previous state to the current state and it keeps that going um, if it if it processes the press collection, it just goes through its press list and uh, says that the key's been pressed. If it processes its release collection, it goes through the release collection and processes that the key's been released, and uh, so on and so forth. There is no worrying about deletion in here because it's holding on to inputables, and those are the only pointers that it's holding on to. So uh, there's no purpose for uh, for to delete those because th that would be deleted when the game object itself is deleted. Instead, in the key event manager, when the key event manager is deleted, it'll go in here and it'll go ahead and delete all of the uh, single key event managers. That way, um, there's no pointers hanging and there's no memory leaks. So uh, that's how the keyboard system works. Now, moving on to the collision system, uh, what we have is uh, um, it all starts in the collidable, of course. Uh, so if we go to the uh, collidable right here, you can see that... Um, we have the the two uh, command patterns that are necessary: the B sphere, 
the model that is being, you know, the collision is being checked against, uh, the set collider model, which you pass the model in and it, and it, uh, it, it extracts the information from there. Update the collision model just basically moves the bounding sphere for right now. Uh, this returns the bounding sphere. And then um, you have the, the virtual void collidable that's supposed to be overridden by, uh, by the game object class. Then down here we have the template uh, register collidable, deregister collidable, and you can see here that um, these are the functions. They have to be in the header. And in here, it just asserts if the collidable has been registered already. And it also checks to see if there's a command. If the command is not created, then it goes ahead, creates the command, and then it adds it to the C manager and registers the state. Uh, same thing for deletion, just opposite. The, um, the commands are deleted when, um, the, when the object is deleted. So if we go to uh, the collidable deletion, you can see here, it checks to see if these are created. If they are, it deletes it. If not, it doesn't do anything. Um, so here's pretty much, you know, the under the hood stuff for update collision data set collider model. This just returns the B sphere. And, um, you know, that's kind of how that works. Now, when, um, when the collidable is registered, it does in fact uh, create a collidable group. So um, let's see if, if it does it in here. Uh, yeah, so it creates a collidable group in the execute. And um, basically what that does, oh, this is deregister, my apologies. Um, basically, oh God, I'm gonna sneeze. Basically what that does is um, it, it registers the collidable group. Now this was my attempt at trying to do constant deletion, but we had talked about constant deletion in class and I'm going to do that. I put it on for doing it over spring break. So. I will definitely handle that on spring break. So you can see here, I do use a set. A set is the is a quicker way to do it for right now. It's uh, it's I believe it's log n, and um, you know until I can get that constant deletion going. Uh, so when it registers the collidable, it uh, it returns obviously the collidable uh, index, and also um, when the collidable group itself is created, it adds the collidable group to the current scene, so that when the scene is um, when the scene is deleted, it also deletes all of the collidable groups in the scene. So you can see here, uh, it adds the collidable group to the collision manager. And when the collision manager is uh, deleted, it um, it will go ahead and it'll go through uh, its collidable groups to delete. And um, oops, and uh, it will delete all of those. It'll call terminate on all of those uh, collidable groups. So this is collidable group base. I'm sorry. So it'll yeah, it'll do that on the collidable groups. So let's let's try and get back there. Um, when the when the collidable group is deleted, it uh, here here's terminate. It deletes collidable group instance and then sets it to null pointer. And you can see here that it has a, it has an output, so we can we can witness when it's happening. In fact, it's happening right here that it does indeed happen. Um, so <clears throat> where was I? I'm sorry. Oh, so you have the register, you have deregister. Unfortunately, this is as good as I can get for right now until I get constant deletion. Again, it's, it's, I guess it's a log in. It's not terrible. Like you said, it's not where the bottleneck of our engine is going to be. Um, but I would definitely like to improve upon it because I would like it to be um, an, an efficient system. So if we go over to here, um, you can see, I don't know if I showed you if the collidable group uses a command pattern. Yeah, it does. Like I did show you that. Um, so if you go over here, we can see that our, uh, our, t our test commands over here, we have the test command pair, test command self. And um, in the test command self, I wanted to, to make sure that you knew that it goes through, it grabs the first one, it sets the second iterator to the second one, and it increments it, or I'm sorry, it sets, it sets the second iterator to the first one, increments it by one, and then goes through the list. So this is going through, and this is checking unique collisions of the same type. It is not checking the same one. It is checking unique collisions of the same type because it is always incrementing that iterator by one. It was a little bit of a head scratcher to figure out how to do that, but I did do it. Um, for the other one, it's, uh, I'm sorry, this is test of command. For the pair command, it's just, you know, basically what was on that slide. So there's not a whole lot of, you know, craziness going on. The, the, the show B sphere is a command pattern um, that creates a, uh, it creates a, um, it creates a draw command. And what this does is it does, um, it does uh, draw the, um, it register, yeah, it, it, it adds a visualizer draw because in here you can see that uh, the visualizer comes after everything else. I showed you this in a previous video, but I just wanted to show you again so that you can see uh, the collision draw manager process elements 
This processes the visualizer draw commands. So, and it pops it off so that the color can change each time it needs to change. Cause you can see here it's red and there it's dark gray. Um, so uh, this does indeed work. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, and you can see also in the, in the scene, um, it does also have, uh, it does also have that other um, necessary uh, component, which is the set, the collision pair for the, the object. I'm sorry. Um, so if we go to the modules, you can see here that I have the collidable and, you know, it has some example on how this needs to be registered and updated. And that gives you some, uh, some notes and also uh, some, some documentation. Uh, I'm not sure exactly the extent of this documentation. I do want to elaborate on it. Um, but I, you know, I, put in the things that I figured would help because on top of that, I also have documentation for each function as well. Um, so it seems like I pretty much got it all in here. Um, other than that, you know, it, uh, well, I'm in the wrong thing. Uh, other than that, um, you know, when, 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 when the, when the collidables deleted, it, it, you know, it deletes the command pattern. But other, other than that, um, that's pretty much it. Um, for this video, uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.